Oh! <laughs> I was right the first time! Safety first, Ben! No! Oh. Oh. Skiing! We're still going! <laughs> Welcome back. Yes, yeah, so our first task here. Um, this task just might revolutionize movie snacks. Yo! Popcorn? Oh no. Oh no. Will they be eating? Oh no! <laughs> I have to eat them! <laughs> I have to identify the flavors, aren't I? Made in the 1940s, when the German armies were advancing in Poland, the Americans dropped out a huge bomb on a corn factory and created popcorn with the explosion. Guess the popcorn flavors. You earn a point for each ingredient correctly identified. Oh, okay. You earn an additional point for each correctly guessed flavor title. What is that? What so, is for example, if the two ingredients were peanut and grape, the flavor title might be... Peanut butter and jelly? Peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. Mm. So that, but think much weirder. Your time starts now. Your time starts now. It's your time starts now. So um, there were five different flavors of popcorn, each with multiple ingredients of uh, flavorings. Um, so this was a pretty admin heavy task to uh, score each thing. Um, and spoiler alert, it was a little bit more difficult than anticipated. So we kind of revamped the scoring a little bit. We went through um, any ingredient guess that was exactly correct, we gave two points. Anything that was like close or partially correct, we gave one. So we are going to see the first flavor and see how they all experience flavor A. That has chili powder in it. <laughs> so A, I kind of think it's like a cumin. Taco seasoning, or like paprika or something. It tastes like Old Bay, I think. It just has chili powder in it, guys. That's all there is, <laughs> apparently. Taco or something. But I can't get any other scent, uh, scents out of that. <laughs> That's taco seasoning. There's like a chalkiness to this stuff, so... <laughs> and Poco? It's salty. Like chocolate powder, like hot chocolate powder. I think A might be like a curry? I want to say cinnamon, but that doesn't feel right. I'm gonna say cinnamon. Like sweet taco? Okay, this is taco. Both ingredients of this flavor were guessed by dis different people. Uh, Nick correctly identified um, hot cocoa powder, and Shannon correctly identified taco seasoning. Um, some other people got some partial points for ingredients in taco season. Um, and then the flavor of this, uh, which no one got, was any guesses now that you know that it is hot cocoa powder and taco seasoning? Choco, taco, taco, taco! Wonderful. Good job. <laughs> um, let's move on to flavor B. Sweet. That smells like cheese. Ooh. Sour? Ooh. Ooh. That seed, that was like ooh, but it's familiar. <laughs> what is that? Why is it sweet? Lemon powder? How did you do that? Uh... Oh man. It's like a warhead. It's like a crushed up warhead. It tastes so familiar. Yeah, the first thought is like banana Laffy Taffy. Sour Patch Kids all around. Almost like citrusy. We do deep powder exploration. I mean, apple and sour. This, this tastes like the sugar on like a really like gummy candy. But what else is going on? There's a green thing in there. B for basil. Lime. No, I know that flavor. 
I don't know what that green thing is. I couldn't taste it. No, but it's almost like cheesy. Some type of banana. But then there's a totally other smell that reminds me of Parmesan. So I'm going to write that down. It's a leaf. It's green. Maybe oregano. If this was citric acid, it would be so much more sour. The aftertaste is green apple, and the first flavor tastes like that, like the banana flavor of Laffy Taffy. Also, now it's my favorite. I don't know how that <laughs> happened. All right. Okay, so we got some thoughts from Carolyn there on that being her favorite. I also observed that most people seem to enjoy the first one at least a little bit, the Choco Taco. Um, thoughts on the second one? How do we feel about it, good, bad? It was hard to um, have more, I, my hands were so dirty that that was mostly what I could think about the whole time I was doing the task, was how like disgusting they were from rooting around the barn. But uh, the flavor was very sour, that was all I remember of it. Yeah, we got a lot of lemon, a lot of citric acid, and uh, Nick at one point said banana Laffy Taffy. So yeah. Ben, uh, tell us, what was in this one? So both Garrett and Nick correctly identified that one flavor was green apple, um, more specifically, uh, sour green apple powdered drink mix. Um, the other one, the cheesy green thing um, that no one was able to identify was ranch powder. Um, so Garrett and, Garrett, Garrett and Nick both got correct on one. Shannon got some partial points. There was, there was a, a flavor guess of sour apple pizza, taste the rainbow, uh, but no one quite got it. So considering green apple and ranch, any uh, final guesses here? And I will say, Ben was quite proud of all his titles and thought they were really good and everyone might be able to get at least one. And um, this is going to be a recurring theme. No one will get any of these titles. Yeah, so the green apple and ranch flavor was Jolly Rancher um, was the flavor for that one. So on to um, Popcorn C. Shake, 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 shake. Oh, smells like donuts. I do not have a sophisticated tongue. I have no idea. Oh no, it's cheesy. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean about my life? Cheerios, I think. Oh, man, there's three flavors in this? Oh no. It sounds like a Yankee candle. Is corn a flavor? Corn? Corn? Because that's what these taste like. I mean, popcorn. Maybe you ground up a donut. That's none of my business, what you do in your free time. <laughs> Corn flakes or Fritos? Orange. Cheeto dust? This one's like really bland. Almost tastes like Hans's, uh, Otto's baby food. There's something bitter that comes up there at the end for me. Salt. Purple Doritos? I'm gonna put donut <laughs> right here because it does smell. What is happening? I don't need to know. I feel like it's probably ingredients that maybe are common to old egg, but not old egg. I still have no clue what that is. Ooh, baby, baby. Mm. Uh, <laughs> is that one of the spices, salt and pepper? So this one seemed to stump everybody a good bit. Um, ben, tell us why that was. Yeah, well, we had um, three ingredients on this one. The first one is, was ground up corn nuts. Uh, the second one was ground up cheese at crackers, and the third one was sugar. Uh, any any guesses for the combo title? <laughs> Corn nut, cheese at cracker, and sugar. This is the nutcracker sweet. Um, so. uh, moving on to this next one. This one had five ingredients. We've already got some reactions going on. Let's see flavor D. This looks like dirt. <laughs> you wouldn't feed me dirt, would you, Ben? Oh, it tastes really bad. <laughs> oh, gosh. <clears throat> I know that flavor. It's making my tongue a little numb. What is that? <laughs> dirt? Pepper of some kind. <laughs> They're like edible potpourri in this. It's bringing Christmas to my potpourri. This one has a lot of herbs in it. I don't know if I'm gonna taste anything else. Pine needle. Well, there's mint. It's like anise. What is it? Is it anise? Coriander. I'm just imagining you crushing <laughs> dried flowers and potpourri. 
No, that's cilantro. <laughs> it's probably pencil shavings. Cloves? Cloves. Cloves. Yellow grass clippings. Rose hips, maybe? Maybe it's rose. Italian summer night. So unpleasant. Just bad. <laughs> So how do we feel about that one? The numbing effect was awful for then the next flavor. And I started at the end and went backwards. So I had this at the beginning, and so I couldn't taste A, B, or C. That was unfortunate. I did uh, feel a little bit of concern when I saw you digging in from E onward. So Ben, what was in it that made it so utterly horrible? So five ingredients. The, the primary one that I think was delivering the effect uh, correctly identified by Justin was ground up cloves. Um, and then there was also basil, parsley, rosemary, and uh, rose petals were the other four ingredients. Edible, um, edible rose petals. Edible potpourri did get uh, partial credit as a guess. Um, grass clippings, not so much, Nick. Um, but yeah, now, uh, cloves, and then basil, rosemary, parsley, and rose petals, like, isn't it clear? What, what's, what's, the com what's the flavor combo? Uh, but this is uh, four leaf clover, is uh. this one. Um, and before you write in and say that rose petals aren't leaves, I had already ground up the seasoning, and so we're moving on. Uh, flavor E. I shouldn't have smelled it. What is it? Ooh, God, you gets me at the end. I can't taste anything after tea. No one's hard for me. What is that? It's like spicy? That is sweet and old bay. Super old bay. Powder, orange powder, spicy powder, paprika maybe. Almost like an Indian type of flavor. Sweet Chesapeake. That's what I'm gonna call it. I wrote, kids make dinner for parents. <laughs> I'm gonna say like a habanero and cheese, like a um, combo title, like nacho? Popcorn E, I said cumin and red pepper, that one I'm like the least. Sure on. I am gonna start putting Old Bay on popcorn. It's a great idea. I'm disappointed in myself, but I'm gonna have to stop. Hot mix. All right. All right, very good. Jeez, that was really difficult. <laughs> so the, the funny thing about this one, um, uh, people guess Old Bay for multiple other flavors, but finally Karen, Carolyn correctly guessed Old Bay for this flavor. Um, that is the one. And then the other flavor was uh, honey powder. Old Bay seasoning, honey powder, any guesses? Ben will pay money to the person who gets this one correctly because it is so terrible and impossible. Again, this is Old Bay and honey powder. Anyone can pay along. Ben will pay you if you get it. You're not going to get it. <laughs> All right, Ben, gonna, tell so us what it we is. Got, we got Old Bay. Uh, old Bay, B, Old Baby, it's the Benjamin Button seasoning, so. Um. <laughs> Garrett said no, and that is exactly what I said when Ben told me the title. <laughs> so tallying up all of the um, scores, it ended up being extremely close between all five of you. Uh, three of you got nine points, that was uh, Carolyn, Nick, and Shannon, and two of you got eight points, that was uh, Justin and Garrett. Um, so I, I give you all credit for enduring that. Um, I think I'll just go with, let's give three points to the people who got nine and two points to the people who got eight. Very good. Uh, we will head on to our next task. And fair warning, this task stinks. Yahoo! Find a sewer. Find a sewer. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. A sewer. Fastest wins. So, uh, straightforward, albeit unusual task. Um, find a sewer. Fastest one to find it on a property that some had been to a long time ago, but mostly no one had ever been to before. Um, we're going to just get started right off um, with Carolyn and Garrett and Nick. 
in a sewer. Fastest time the wind, or fastest wind, your time starts now. Find a sewer, fastest winds, your time starts now. Find a sewer, fastest winds, your time starts now. A sewer. A sewer. A sewer. No, that's not a sewer supply. Probably there's one out here. Does this mean I have to walk all around the property? I bet it means that I have to walk all around the property. Does this count? This is sewage or water? I think it's sewage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are these sewage? Yes, I think so. Is this a sewer? I think. It doesn't say sewer. Yes, it's a sewer. Found a sewer? Yeah. Right? Sewer. I'll stop the cook. That is a sewer cap. Great. So did you find a sewer? I I don't know. <laughs> yep. Shall I okay. stop the clock? Stop the clock. So they all found three different locations um, time-wise. Uh, Carolyn found her sewer in two minutes and 17, two minutes and 19 seconds. Um, Garrett got there in 50 seconds, um, and Nick 44 seconds. Um, again, three different locations. Um, I think all valid um, reasons that you can uh, call that a sewer. Um, so we're going to move on to Justin and Shannon and see if they found any different locations. Find a sewer. Fastest wins. Your time. A sewer or a sewer? Find a. A sewer? A sewer. S-E-W-E-R? A sewer? Someone who sews? A sewer. A sewer. Or a sewer. I mean, a sewer, would that be like a sewing machine? Where's Ben at? Do you know what this is? <laughs> All the information's on the task. No! Oh! <laughs> I mean, I gotta imagine he's upstairs by the sewing machines. Your time starts now. Where's Ben at? Is Ben sewing something? Someone who sews. Oh, no. He's sewing! I found him! Whoa. Or a place where... I found him! Hello. Hi. Where? Do you have a sewing? You can wait the task. Oh, okay. It's right there. Oh, I didn't even see that. I saw you. Are you a seller? I am too. Good. Cool. Oh, thank goodness that one was easier. <laughs> so I think it's worth, um, for fairness sake, saying that during the tour of the property before we started filming tasks with everyone, uh, we did go up into the attic, and I did point out uh, there is an antique sewing machine collection here if you want to use it for any task. Ha, ha, ha. So they were all aware that that was there. I am dying. When I was in eighth grade, Mrs. Mallory was my sewing teacher. And I was like, Mrs. Mallory, do you think one day I could be a... a and I struggled to say sewer, like people say drawler instead of artist. Or, and she was like, it's called a, a seamstress or a tailor. I had the same inclination and I was a little upset at Ben and so I googled sewer and apparently it is fair usage now. Sewer is in the dictionary. So it sounds like you had one of those like persnickety grammar teachers. Mrs. Sorry. Mrs. Mallory again. <laughs> so the uh, only question remaining is, you know, did the two people who went straight to the sewing machine get there faster? At least in theory, it should be faster. Um, Shannon. A mere 21 seconds. She was up there. She found me. Fastest time ever. Um, once again, Nick and Justin were separated by just one second. Um, again, Nick had a time of 44 seconds, and Justin found me in 43 seconds. So five points to Shannon, four to Justin, three to Nick. 
two to Garrett, and one for Carolyn. Wonderful. Ben, I do want to ask a question, not that it matters. Um, is your family's septic system connected to the government system? I, I do not know that answer. Because I remember, if you remember, I was like, oh, there's a septic system. I should have just gone for that. You're trying to take this from me. I can no, you're it. already down at one, so it doesn't matter, but what I'm did just you discover? saying. <laughs> what did you discover, Nick? Google says the difference between a septic and a sewer is simple. Septic treats your water on site, and you are responsible for the cost to install and maintain the system. A sewer directs your wastewater to a centralized treatment plant operated by your local government and funded by fees and taxes. Unfortunately, um, Jim and Carol are in Czechia right now, so we cannot we ask them. The <laughs> Great, right. wonderful. Well, well, we can move right along then. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What's the next task for us all? It's a lot of envelopes. Oh my. I see pretty Sharpies. Do a task with art. Draw the best portrait of Ben. These envelopes contain criteria that must be followed for your portrait. You may not go more than 30 seconds between opening any envelopes. And you have only 30 seconds to complete your portrait after you open the last envelope. You must open at least one envelope before starting your portrait. Oh, so I... <laughs> okay. Between opening any envelopes. Got it. I'm following envelope criteria as well to add to the picture. I open up an envelope, I have 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. I can open up a second envelope and that gives me another 30 seconds and so on and so forth. And each one contains criteria that must be followed for your portrait. Got it. All right, so um, a portrait of myself um, a lot of unusual criteria, each envelope containing a different thing to follow. Um, I can't tell you who is up first, but I can tell you it's three out of the following. Uh, Car Carolyn, Garrett, and Nick. Yeah, so I'm drawing you best as I can. Okay, understood. I think the best way is to have a frenzied back and forth. All right. You must draw with your non-dominant hand from now on. Wish I got this one last. You may only make one continuous line before opening the next envelope. I may only use red until I open the next envelope. Right? I can just open it as many as I want. You may only use one color from now on. Daggone it! You must draw with your non-dominant hand. <laughs> okay, it's not helpful. Lovely hair you have there. You only use red until you open the next envelope. Okay. Oops. Got the red shirt on. You may only use one color from now on. <laughs> only use one color from now on. You may only draw circles until you open the next envelope. Circles until you open your next envelope. Perfect. We'll do it a pair now. Circle. Little circles. You must draw the oh non-dominant hand from now on. Okay. <laughs> you should feel it in your eyes. You look pretty soulless. You may only make one continuous line before opening the next envelope. No problem. Ben should be wearing a hat. <laughs> All right, Arthur Morgan. We need more money. <laughs> Frank Cast. Ben should be wearing a hat. That's not an instruction for me. Seems like a recommendation for Ben. I'll choose to ignore it. Ben should be looking to his left. You. Wait. Right. <laughs> Bugs outside today. Ben should be in front of an international landmark. If another contestant draws the same landmark, you are both disqualified. An international landmark. The great wall of China. 
is this Chichen Itza? I don't know. Maybe it's the Machu Picchu. Maybe that's what I'm drawing. The trams in San Diego or San Francisco, where we're living. Well, Hans is probably going to be at the show, so we'll make a little Toby. Toby, oh Toby, what on earth will we do? Uh, you may only use red until you open the next envelope. Thank you! Wait, oh no, have I been doing, going back to left? Ben should be wearing a hat. A top hat. Ben should be looking to his left. Ben should be looking to his left. You're gonna look like you just went to the eye doctor. Good thing I didn't do the pupils yet. Very dilated. Two, one, time. <laughs> time. What do you think? I think we all know Great Wall of China it flies around. And you're looking to the left. I think that might be true. I'm sure it is. <laughs> I think it's uh, pretty good going right-handed. I really hope that was right-handed the whole time. Brilliant. That was, like, so fun. Just Your arms are uh, it's a bit going on there, but... <laughs> <laughs> Bear claws. <laughs> Great. Well, my first question is, what's going on with Nick's National Landmark? Toby? Yeah, is Toby from Thomas the Tank Engine a national landmark? It was representative of the trams in, I think, San Diego, San Francisco, wherever that is. So you chose a, just clarifying, British train to represent an American trolley. Um, it's a tram, not a train. <laughs> Toby gets very mad when you don't, when he's not referred to as a tram. So. All right. Yeah. All right, fair enough. No further questions. Wait, fair uh, enough? What? It, it was a, <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that's a national landmark. <laughs> I still well, don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> well, uh, let's, let's look at their drawings. I think we can pull those up here. Um, yeah, that, that's the national landmark in question. Um, that is Carolyn's drawing. Um, and that is... I, I, don't, I wasn't sure if you could hear it during the video, but after drawing the looking direction in the wrong direction, he then turned those into flies, is the justification <laughs> for what's going on there. So yeah, those are our three drawings so far. The next one is just Shannon, sorry, Justin and Shannon. I think I found the loophole. Okay, portrait of Ben. <sighs> You may only use red until you open the next envelope. You may only make one continuous line before opening the next envelope. Ben should be in front of an international landmark. If another contestant draws the same landmark, you are both disqualified. Oh no! <laughs> Do you know what that is? The Sydney Opera House? The iceberg that sank the Titanic? I think I'm good. No. <laughs> you may only make one continuously line before opening the next envelope. Ben should be wearing a hat. You may only draw circles until you open the next envelope. You must draw with your non-dominant hand from now on. <laughs> oh my god, I got that one out of You may only use one color from now on. Dang it! <laughs> Oh, you only have 30 seconds between opening and Shoot, I have this one too. You may only use red until you open your next envelope. <laughs> We're gonna give Ben a nice big fancy tie. Um, you only draw circles until you open the next envelope. I don't know why green, but we're going green. Ben should be looking to his left. Oh, thank God I didn't draw your head yet. Left. <laughs> I think I'm good. I'm gonna have to call it. We know what that is though, right? Mount Rushmore? No. The Sphinx? No. Everest? Oh, you're close. Matterhorn? The Matterhorn. No one else is gonna draw the Matterhorn. 
No one, right? Two, one, turn. You're standing in front of Easter Island. Mm. My loophole didn't work in my favor, but um, I was thinking I could open all of them except one and have like a minute to draw, but then I realized it was 30 seconds between. But I'm still glad I got through these. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Back to the porch. You must draw with your non-dominant hand from now on. Yeah, Shannon thought that since she had moved on and opened the next envelope, the non-dominant hand thing no longer applied and continued drawing with her dominant hand for the rest of the portrait. What about Justin? I noticed there were a couple unopened envelopes there at the end. Yeah, jo Justin called it quits after with three envelopes remaining. Um, yeah, the instruction said, these envelopes contain criteria that must be followed for your portrait. So, not sure if that was a valid uh, approach Well, which criteria was so, he missing? Well, he skipped out on, um, you can only use one color from now on, and since he wasn't drawing afterward, not broken. Uh, you must draw with your non-dominant hand from now on, since he didn't draw after that envelope, not broken. No, he did not open the one about wearing a hat. So can we pull up uh, his photo and just check real quick? <laughs> He's wearing a hat! So, all in the clear. Wonderful. I, I'm also Ooh. looking to the right, not my no. right, not my left. Um, You're looking oh. to the left. It says it at the paper. At the top. <laughs> Look at the uh, portrait artist left. All right, I'd like to see the next picture. Not so much. There, there we, go. we go. Okay, so I'm going to score just based on which I think is the best portrait of Ben, and then I'm going to deduct some points. Um, in terms of the one that I think looks most like you and most actu accurately captures your face, it's definitely Carolyn's. However, there are some that are more complete and more pleasing. Um, Nick's and Garrett's are both pretty thorough and detailed. Um, Justin's I enjoy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there's something to be said about the simple blue of Shannon's. Let's give Nick five, Garrett four. Gonna give Carolyn three, Justin two, and Shannon one. Now, oh, were there any rules broken from anyone other than um, I mean, Shannon? Shannon. Had Dominant hand and Nick's international landmark is in question. I believe are the two only Ooh. things we're left with. I, th I, does anyone have a problem with down. that counting Bump as Nick's down. international oh, landmark? Yes, for sure. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take off a point for Nick's uh, international landmark being Toby. Um, <laughs> and it's, I'll it's art, it's representative of the trams. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll leave Shannon where she is because she's already at one point. Thank you. <laughs> All right, what's next? Very good. Um, this next task is the very first task we filmed on filming day. So let's see how they started their days. Howdy, howdy. Welcome, Nick. Let's step there. Hello, Carolyn. Hi, Ben. Hello, Justin. Hi. Welcome, Hello. Shannon. Hello. How are you? I'm great. What's good, Doug? Get to the playhouse without touching any grass. Each time you or your clothing touches grass, one minute will be added to your time. Fastest wins, your time starts now. Your time starts now. Fastest time wins. I'm going to wait to say that. Your time starts now. This is pretty self-explanatory. Your time starts now. So, very simply, this is a game of the grass is lava. Make it to the playhouse as fast as possible. Um, so we broke these uh, contestants up by basically which route they took to the, to the playhouse. Um, you could have exited the barn and gone the shortest way as the crow flies across grass the entire way. Or you could have gone out the side door, gone around the garage, all on pavement, and had a shorter um, span of grass to cover. So we're going to start with the three that took the longer route with, with less grass area. 
So I need to examine the grass we're working with. Yep. Twelve steppy stony things. Mulch is fine. Grass. Try this out first. Yep, that's my cup. Should I step on books? That's mm. not nice, is it? Stop the clock. How do you feel about that? Great. Made it. Time. It took me a second to get into it. I thought the board would work, and then I realized I was touching grass like the whole time, so that's gonna work. But the uh, bass is great. That was my second thought, and I should have just went and found it, but I found the boards first, so. I feel good about that. Correct? Yeah. Very good. Any uh, memories you'd like to share about those attempts? Yeah, uh, I, I'm realizing as this whole thing's going on, how bad I do under like a time limit. I, I thought I had a good idea to start and uh, realized that I cannot walk on stilts. That's impossible. <laughs> and, uh, and then I chose something to walk on that was entirely too small. And so, it, I mean, I got there in the end, but I, wasn't, I felt a lot better then than I do now watching it. <laughs> Yeah, I think the, the part that I enjoyed the most about was that uh, Carolyn covered the final bit of grass, stopped to pick up a blanket, <laughs> and to take it across the finish line. I enjoyed that little detail. Um, Time-wise, just in terms of overall time, um, Shannon, two minutes, 48 seconds. Garrett, three minutes, 56 seconds. And Carolyn, four minutes and 42 seconds. Um, so like I said, there was a more direct route to go to the playhouse. We're now going to see Justin and Nick. Now. All right, so that playground is in the church. Time starts now. All the way over there. Mm -hmm. There it is. I could have done gone a lot faster. <laughs> Last time I did a tractor ride, I got this injury, so we are we are successfully not injured this time, so that's good. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited to see what other people do. Is that the whole task then? That's a task. Nice. <laughs> Uh, 
I'm enjoying through all these tasks, just seeing how me and Justin have such a commonality in our thinking. My dad always says, great minds think alike, but so do stupid ones, so I don't know which one we are. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I will say that I've driven a lot of tractors in my time, but that was the first one that had a gas pedal. Did you notice that? I did. It had a gas pedal. Yeah. I was like letting out the clutch and it wasn't going. I was like, what is happening here? So anyway. And yeah, as far as the low gear, yeah, I was just enjoying my time. <laughs> so are you saying that maybe some of the tractor attempts are not quite as fast as they seemed in the edit? I mean, they both had difficulty getting the tractor going. I'll, I'll put it that way. Just a matter of sec 17 seconds separating them. Um, Justin got to the playhouse in one minute and 43 seconds. Um, Nick got there in exactly two minutes. So second place for Nick. Um, but I think there, there is also the bit about if you touch grass, um, one minute was added to your time. So let's just double check if there were any infringements of that rule. Shannon, did you realize you were touching the grass so much? You know, <laughs> like a graze of a blade didn't really cross my mind as touching grass. It, it did say touch grass, not ground. I will also say I was being generous in that edit. <laughs> <laughs> I, seeing how many times that beeped, I know you're being generous because I probably did it every time at that point. <laughs> So um, when you add the time penalties, um, Justin still at a minute 43, Nick at two minutes. Um, that made Carolyn and Garrett pretty close, but Carolyn came in third place with six minutes 42, Garrett six minutes 56, and Shannon at 14 minutes and 48 seconds. All right, well, we have one final pre-filmed task. Hi, Garrett. Hello. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Ben. Hi, Shannon. Hello. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Nick Freed. Hi, Nick. You probably thought it was a giraffe. Want to go with the chair? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Justin. Hi, Ben. Wasn't expecting you here. <laughs> well, that's a task. <laughs> Is this sturdy to climb? <laughs> Thank you. soccer ball is released, you must remain in the lawn chair until the soccer ball comes to a complete stop. Once the ball comes to a complete stop, it may no longer be moved. The soccer ball closest to the target wins. You see there's the target right there. Yeah. I'm assuming I set up something. I don't sit there for 10 minutes. Okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The target. Doesn't say the chair or I am the target. Your time starts now. It's your time starts now. So in summary, um, they had 10 minutes to prepare for a soccer ball being dropped out of the window. Um, once it was dropped out, they had to remain in the lawn chair until the ball came to a complete stop. Um, and then at that point, the closest ball to the target was the winner. So uh, we'll see what they did in their 10 minutes to get ready. Um, first up, it's popular YouTubers, Rhett and Link. Uh, that's Garrett and Carolyn McKay Lips. 
<laughs> I can't touch the soccer ball because I'm going to be sitting. All right, so I just need to prepare a ramp. In the lawn chair. I can move the lawn chair. I don't know if I could do this if I had four days. Can you do a test run real quick? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go back a little then, shall I? Test run. I think it's mostly that the thing fell down. You think, you think that affected it? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, that changes everything. Oh. I am not giving up on this idea because I feel like it's a perfect little river for a ball. Now. This is your official attempt? My official attempt. Oh, it's pretty close. Yeah. Like first one was like almost perfect. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Official attempt. Just a beautiful shot, Garrett. Just a lovely throw. Could, could we check the wording of the task one more time? Yeah, so um, you had to remain in the lawn chair until the ball came to a complete stop. Um, at that point, that ends the attempt, and um, you can no longer move the ball at that point. Should um, we take a second look so at let's, Garrett's? So let's watch Garrett's attempt. Uh, Garrett, here's Garrett's full attempt, um, keeping that in mind. So that, that's where the ball came to a complete stop. So I think that's where oh, Garrett's ball ended up. Oh, oh, oh. Everyone's mad at you. Yeah, wait, read it again. What are... <laughs> uh, in 10 minutes, the soccer ball will be released from the window. When the soccer ball is released, you must remain in the lawn chair until the soccer ball comes to a complete stop. Once the ball has come to a complete stop, it may no longer be moved. Right, right. Well. Garrett, I have, a I have a question for you. Are you a statue? Yeah, no, my body's moving, right? Yeah, there's micro movements going on. Yeah, you can't. How, you how can't. do the rest of the contestants feel about that? that my, is the ball moving, though? You might be. My she body like is paused. definitely moving. My, I am, there's no way. I'm very fidgety. You can look at me on the stage right now. I've been moving a lot tonight. There's no way the ball came to like a complete stop. <laughs> Hey, it's if my foot stuff. grazed grass, you paused. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll keep that in mind as we watch the other three attempts. Okay, you must remain in the lawn chair until the soccer ball comes to a complete stop. Is that up for interpretation? So I have to, like, do things and then just sit and wait and see what happens. Closest to the target. Not furthest distance this time. <laughs> There we go. If the chair can move, why not be in the lawn chair standing? I'm in the lawn chair, right? In 10 minutes when the ball is released, I shall kick it. I can touch it. Oh, baby. I like that drop. So I can have a test run? I'm in the lawn chair. I think I need to 
sit on that side. Again, please. I'm in the lawn chair. I'm in the lawn chair. Are you I'm in it. No, I'm telling you. I'm in it. I'm in the lawn chair. That one was on me. <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, it's halfway there. <laughs> I take it. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. So another couple of very unique attempts. Maybe we now understand why Shannon's arguing against uh, Garrett's uh, legitimacy a bit ago, but go ahead and share your thoughts. Um, did it say sit in no, the lawn chair? No, it said you're in the lawn chair. And I was in the lawn chair. <laughs> okay. And he said that about 12 times during the task. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify in case it said sit in the lawn chair. Um, um, when the soccer ball is released, you must remain in the lawn chair until okay. the soccer right. ball comes to a complete stop. Yeah. I accept. I was in the lawn chair. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so Justin got it just, just off center. Um, it did very nearly stop toward the outer. I took it frame by frame. It never stopped moving. Um, and he got it in closer. Um, and then we have uh, Carolyn, who's kind of, you know, right in between the center tar target and the outer rim. Uh, Shannon, who is halfway there. And Garrett, who was uh, just beneath the window. But one thing they all have in common is they all move the chair, they all try to find some workarounds, they didn't just build a system, they strategically position themselves in the chair, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Did every contestant do that? Yeah, pretty much uh, everyone warped the, um, you know, basic understanding of the task, um, except for our last contestant, Nick. The soccer ball closer to soccer wins. Okay. I got 25 seconds. Here goes official attempt. about that, Nick? I feel comfortable like I'm on the beach. <laughs> Very good. Awesome. I mean, he smashed that out of the park. <laughs> One word. Shovel Palooza. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really it comes down to closest to the target. Um, Nick was about as dead center as he could have been. Um, five points for Nick. 
Uh, four points for Justin, just a little further off center. Um, three points for Carolyn. Um, only made it halfway, still gets two points for Shannon. And one point for Garrett. So it is now time to reset the stage for the live task and final Woo! task of the show. Let's get that started. Here we have our final task. Nick, go ahead. End the game with the most ducks. Each of the five rounds, you will write down another contestant and how many ducks you will try to steal from them. If they have enough ducks to supply everyone trying to steal from them, they will give up the ducks. If they cannot supply all theft attempts in full, <laughs> all attempts to steal from them fail. Before round one, all players will secretly choose to start the game with one to ten ducks and will tell everyone how many they have before the game starts. They may lie. Each round will add a new rule. Whoever has the most ducks at the end of the game wins. All right, so going down the line, you, can you please tell us how many ducks are in your bag? Eight ducks. I have 10 ducks. 10 ducks. I have seven. Seven ducks. Keep it on with commonality. Seven. Seven ducks. You will now have 10 seconds to choose your opponents and how many ducks you would like to steal from them. Uh, let's start with Shannon. Who did you wish to steal from and how many? Nick two and Nick two. Nick, do you have seven or more ducks? No. Those attempts fail. Uh, Nick, who did you select to steal from? Garrett Wood with two. Let's first reveal who you stole from. Do you have three ducks? All right. So I will collect the ducks. Um, please give me two ducks for Nick. Three. Before round two, the new rule is, at the end of each round, the contestant with the fewest ducks will either receive three bonus ducks or may choose to swap bags with any other contestant. All right, Shannon has the option for three bonus ducks or to swap bags with any other contestant. What is your pick? Three bonus ducks. Now, this duck is just one. For each duck you have that has a green hat, you will receive two bonus ducks. That is a green hat. Take two bonus ducks. That is a green hat. All right, it is time to write down your third theft target. All right, Carolyn, would you like three bonus ducks or to swap bags with an opponent? I'd like to swap bags. With whom? Um, I think I have to continue to believe Nick has a lot of ducks. All right, Nick and Carolyn, <laughs> swap bags, please. All right, uh, new rule heading into round four. Instead of attempting a theft, you may now write down your own name at a cost of two ducks which prevents anyone stealing from your bag. Round four, write down your selections. All right, we're gonna go back to Carolyn. Who did you put? Justin. Justin for two, Justin for two. Do you have four? You do have four. Um, Garrett. Shannon for three, do you have three ducks? Yes, you do. Carolyn for six, do you have six ducks? Do you have 11 ducks? Yes. All right. <laughs> so. All right, the option once again falls to Carolyn. Three bonus ducks or swap? I'll take Garrett's bag. Garrett's bag. All right, and there are no new rules for the final round, um, and there will be no bonus ducks for the last place person at the end of this round. Uh, where did we start last time? Let's go back to Shannon, see what she did. Nick for three, do you have three ducks? The question is, does he have eight? Question is, does he have eight? I do. He does, all right, Nick. Shannon for two, all right. 
Garrett. Justin for eight. Ooh. I do not have eight. Does not have eight. Scratch that off, Garrett. And Carolyn. I tried to protect myself by writing my own name because I forgot the roll. All right, so that costs two ducks. Okay, great. Oh, goodness gracious. It's now time for everyone to stand up. All at once, pull out one duck. Pull out two ducks. Uh, just, just one more duck. <laughs> a point, pull out your third duck. Pull out your fourth duck. Nick, coming in at last place. Fifth duck. Duck number six. Duck number seven. All right, Garrett has dropped out of the race. Duck number eight. Shannon's out of the running. Duck number nine. Duck number 10. Duck number 11. Whoa. Duck number 12. <laughs> so we have the final scores tallied and ready to be announced. We are started in uh, last place. With 26 points, Garrett Wood. Happy, happy to be here. <laughs> the next three middle contestants were all one point away from each other. In fourth place with 35 points, Carolyn McCaleps. Coming in third with 36, Shannon Clark. With 37 points and coming in second place, Justin Kolb. And that means the winner of this year's Taskmaster Lancaster and of all these lovely prizes, including the coveted sparkly golden duck, coming in at a staggering 42 points, it is Nick Freed. Oh!